The architecture of a database management system consists of four different layers. And if you watched my previous video explaining that databases is a vertical topic, you can now easily recognize the different aspects we see in the different layers. So in the four different layers, of course, at the bottom, we see the different hardware that is used by the database system. That may be hard disks, maybe main memory, or whatever future hardware is going to appear in the next years. Then, of course, there's another layer on top that is dealing with data layouts mainly. On top of that, there's something that's handling with indexes or data structures, as you might call them in the undergrad courses. And on top of that, there's another layer mainly concerned with algorithms. And all these layers have specific names. They're called like that. So here we have the store that has to do with data layouts mainly or a lot to do with data layouts. Then in the middle here, there's the indexer dealing with all the indexing that's going on in the database system. And on top of that is the query optimizer, which is mainly concerned with algorithms. Of course, the query optimizer will also use data structures and indexes and will have to know something about the store. We will come back to that. But in principle, the separation is as I just explained it. So let's look at the different levels in more detail. So the hardware. The hardware has very different performance characteristics and it's very important to know about that in the layers above. Reliability is important. You want to make sure that you don't lose your data. And depending on the devices you're using, reliability may differ a lot and we better know about that. And another important aspect, of course, is price. How much does the hardware cost? And with the price, the properties of the hardware also change a lot. The level on top is called the store. So in the store, we will look at aspects like whether it's row oriented, column oriented, or any hybrid. We have to look at how to lay out data on disk, how to lay out data in memory and flash. We have to look a little bit at the caches. A lot of the storage hierarchy has to be factored in when thinking about how to design the store of the database system. The next level is the indexer. So here we will look at different types of indexes indexes optimized for hard disk, optimized for flash memory, for main memory, but also stuff that works very well on the cache hierarchy. So indexes may have very different properties. They may be designed for primary keys, for secondary keys. They may be designed for pure relational business data. They may be designed for spatial data, temporal data, many, many things to learn. We will look at that. On the next level, there's a query optimizer. Query Optimizer translates the incoming SQL query or whatever declarative language you're using into a plan. So basically, it's kind of a compiler. It's very similar to what a programming language compiler does. So what, what comes in here is just a specification of what the user wants to have. And the Query Optimizer has to find out how to get that data. So the user says, I want to have that data. And he just says what he wants to have. And then the query optimizer has to find out how. And that's the difficult part because the query optimizer has to factor in many things like data distributions, hardware, data layouts. Everything that's underneath has to be factored in to come up with the hopefully most effective plan. And that's a pretty complex problem involving a lot of optimization algorithms. We will look at that. On top of that, of course, is the user who is using the database system and as said before in other videos here we should worry a little bit about usability concerns of course yeah if the system is unusable maybe users won't use it so it's always a trade-off what is the right interface for such a system so the interface of a system shouldn't be too complex still it should be expressive enough and so forth you have to hit the right sweet spot to not shoo users away so one important aspect in database systems today is there are usually many many tuning knobs you can set and there are special tools that help users define indexes define data layouts stuff like that that's called physical design advisory physical design advisors that help users to define the right indexes, define the right data layouts, the right distribution across different machines and stuff like that. That's very important. And that's something where we should worry a little bit about how the user interacts with a system. The other concern is, of course, of declarative languages like SQL being the most prominent one. 
C SQL is something where the user interacts with the system, although SQL is sometimes hidden in an information system, if the database is just one component of a larger system, then maybe the user is not even aware that he is using a database system because it's somewhere hidden. Yeah, and finally, there are these system aspects that are the cross-level concerns. Those aspects are often very hard to grasp. And I explained it already in my previous video. So here I'm showing it again. It's like an airplane a system, something consisting of many, many different components. And there's interaction. And this cannot be expressed in levels or separate software components. So when we look at this database system, we will learn that the system doesn't feel so much as a jet plane. It feels more like an entire airport. So the complexity is very high and we have to be concerned about many interactions, especially if you look at multi-core systems or multi-node systems later on. Many things to learn about that. And, um, and of course, you need a coordinator to avoid that planes crash into each other. And that's like air control. There must be a tower, there must be a controlling component making sure that nothing goes wrong in the system. And that's a cross-level concern. That's an extra component we need in a database system. Coordinating the different levels, being aware of the different levels and making sure that nothing goes wrong, especially with respect to data consistency, especially with respect to race conditions, multi-threading, concurrency control, all these things. There has to be a controlling component. That's called the scheduler sometimes the transaction manager, there are many names for that. Uh, for the moment, it's okay to know that there has to be a component steering what's going on in the system. So we have to enlarge this box a little bit here because a scheduler usually sits inside the database system. So well, when we look at the different levels, we will also see that there's always a twist between computation and data access. They're usually competing or fighting each other in a way. So a lot of computer science deals with computation, how to reduce the number of operations you do in a specific software, how to um, determine the runtime complexity of a specific algorithm. So here in databases, we look a lot at the data access times. So usually the stuff we look at is not so much concerned with the computational time. That's usually not the problem. The stuff we look at is this here, data access. That is hindering, that is slowing down the execution of a specific program. And that's very, very important in database systems and in this course. So if you look at the different levels, we can see that whether a level is focusing on computation or data access differs a lot from level to level. So for example, in the store, of course, this is mainly concern about data access and not so much about computation. And the more you go up, the more the database is concerned about computation. So here is a little less of data access, a little more of computation. And here it's even less data access and even more computation. This is the optimizer, this is the indexer, and this is the data store and so forth. So that's a high level trade-off, a high level observation you will see in the system. In the controller part, what, what we called the what we called air traffic control before, it's a wild mix of the two things. If you liked this video, don't forget to hit the like button. Thank you. So if you want to see more database videos, be it in English or in German, take a look at my website datenbankenlernen.de. It has a couple of English and German videos. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel, Jens Did, or you look at our website, infosys.uni-saarland.de. See you there.